So let's continue our discussion of objects undergoing simple harmonic motion. Now let's suppose we have a mass attached to a coil spring that is resting on a frictionless horizontal surface. Now let's suppose we compress our mass, so we compress our spring and then we let go. At the moment we let go, there is a force acting on our mass due to our coil spring and the force will accelerate our object in the positive direction along the x-axis. Now eventually the object will reach the equilibrium position at which our displacement is assumed to be zero. So because the displacement is zero, that means that the force acting on the object due to our coil spring at the equilibrium position is also zero. Now that means our object will have a certain velocity and that velocity will be the maximum velocity that our object can reach during its harmonic oscillation. Now eventually the object will reach a stretched position where the spring will be completely stretched. And at that point, the object will momentarily come to rest and the force will act in the opposite direction of our motion. So it will point in the negative direction along the x-axis, bringing our object back, restoring that object back to its initial position. So the object will continue to oscillate back and forth. Now, let's talk about the energies of these objects in Diagram 1, Diagram 2, and Diagram 3. So initially, in Diagram 1, our object has no velocity. So that means it has no uh, kinetic energy. But the spring is compressed. So that means because the spring is compressed, a displacement that implies that there is energy stored in our spring as elastic potential energy. So in diagram one, the mass is fully compressed, so all the energy is stored in the spring as elastic potential energy, and it's given by this equation, where x in this case is our amplitude. So this equation gives us how much elastic potential energy is stored in our spring that is compressed a distance x and has a spring stiffness constant k. Now what about position number two? Well in position number two our spring is not compressed and it's not stretched. The displacement of our spring is zero so that means there is no elastic potential energy. So all the elastic potential energy from diagram one from our object being in this position has been transformed into kinetic energy. That energy gave our object velocity. So at diagram two, the displacement is zero, so all the elastic potential energy has been transformed into kinetic energy. And to calculate how much kinetic energy we have at the equilibrium position, we have to use the following formula. One half mass times V max squared, where V max is our maximum velocity. Now, what about when our object is stretched, when our object reaches this position? Well, once again, all that kinetic energy has been transformed into our elastic potential energy. Whereas in this case, we had elastic converting to kinetic. In this case, we have kinetic converting to elastic potential. So let's suppose our object is stretched a certain distance. That means if we want to calculate how much elastic potential energy is stored in this stretched spring, we simply use this equation. So once again, spring is fully stretched in position three and all kinetic energy has been transformed back into elastic potential energy. Now, as long as we assume there is no force of friction acting on our mass and the spring, well then, the total energy of our object is conserved. So as long as there is no friction, energy is conserved, and we have the following equation. So the total energy is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy and the elastic potential energy of our object when the object is oscillating back and forth. 
So for example, at position 1, our object has no kinetic energy. So this term goes to zero, and the total energy at position 1 is simply 1 half k multiplied by x squared, where x is the amplitude of our harmonic oscillation. So, our elastic potential energy is uh, transformed into kinetic, and then kinetic is transformed back to elastic, and the cycle continues on and on as our object is oscillating back and forth in simple harmonic motion. Now, recall the following two equations. This equation gives us the position of our object with respect to time. So it's given by A, our amplitude, multiplied by cosine of this uh, quantity inside our cosine. So our angular frequency and our phase angle and our time t. Now also recall that the velocity, which is given by taking the derivative of this position function with respect to time, is given by this equation. Negative a, our amplitude, multiplied by omega, multiplied by sine of this quantity. So we can take this and plug it into the x in this formula, and we can take this velocity and plug it into the velocity in this formula. And let's see what we get. Well, we get the following result. Now, recall that our omega squared, the angular frequency squared, is equal to the ratio of the spring stiffness constant to the mass. So we can plug this quantity into the omega squared, and we get the following result. So, notice the m's will cancel, and also notice that we have uh, consistent terms appearing on both of these uh, term. So we have the k, the one-half, and the a squared appear on this term as well as on this term. So we can take those out and we get the following result. One-half k times amplitude squared is multiplied by sine squared of this quantity plus cosine squared of the same quantity. Now recall our trig function identity. It states that sine squared of some angle plus cosine squared of that angle is always equal to 1. So this entire inside becomes 1 and we're simply left with 1 half k times a squared is equal to e. Well, the e simply comes from the fact that this is equal to e, so that means this must also be equal to e. So let's call this equation 1 and equation 2. Notice, because they both equal the same exact quantity e, we could set them equal, and we get the following result. What this basically states is the following. Uh, the total energy of our system, when that system is compressed or stretched, is equal to the sum of our two types of energies, elastic and kinetic energy, when the object is at some other position along its simple harmonic oscillation pathway. So if we take this equation and rearrange it and solve it for the velocity, we'll get the following useful formula. So this gives us a relationship between the velocity, our spring stiffness constant, the mass, our displacement, and amplitude. Now, why exactly is this equation useful? Well, it's useful because it gives us a way to calculate the velocity of our object that's oscillating in simple harmonic motion without knowing the time. So if we know the time, we can use this formula to solve for our velocity. But if we don't know the time, we can use this formula to solve for our velocity.